Welcome back. You're watching Australian Agenda. We've just been speaking to Labor's Andrew Lee, and we're joined now live out of Melbourne by the Prime Minister's Parliamentary Secretary, Josh Frydenberg. Thanks very much for being there. Nice to be with you, Peter. We want to go through some of the uh, international uh, events, I suppose, and discussions that the Prime Minister is going to be involved in uh, in the coming days and week or so. But before getting to that, there was a piece by Bob Carr in The Australian where he was indicating his support for Palestine very much, as well as criticising quite strongly the State of Israel. I just wanted to get your reaction to that. Oh, well, Peter, I agree with uh, Julia Gillard. Bob Carr should have never been appointed uh, foreign minister. He was lazy and he did nothing in that job. I also agree with Julie Bishop that Bob Carr is a dilettante, as we saw through his diaries, talking about his steel abs and his preference for first-class uh, pyjamas on his, uh, on his tourist um, trips around the world, uh, where he uh, pretended to be Australia's foreign minister. I mean, he is a real opportunist. He's been silent, as we've seen, ISIL or ISIS uh, go ahead and engage in beheadings in Iraq and in Syria and butchery and genocide. Um, but he's just obsessed with the Israel-Palestinian issue. And I just think it's because he's got relevance deprivation syndrome. He was a failure as a state premier. He was a failure as a foreign minister. Uh, he knows very little about the region. And, uh, you know, to paraphrase Winston Churchill, uh, Bob Carr is an immodest man with much to be modest about. Um, I just think, uh, you know, you don't hear him talk about the fact that Hamas has been linked uh, to, uh, to groups like Boko Haram, uh, received support from uh, jihadi groups, uh, has engaged in suicide bombing. Uh, this week just came They've out... also been linked to uh, support... Iran, which America is now working with in the fight against ISIS. Oh, well, no one's a friend of Iran right now, as they've got a... Uh, a uh, nuclear program, but it's true that uh, Iran as a Shiite country uh, is very concerned about the jihad of Sunni uh, ISIL or ISIS. But let's face it, Hamas in its constitution, Peter, talks about the destruction of Israel. It's not a partner for peace for Israel, and until that can be resolved, I don't think you'll get a negotiated two-state solution. Well, we have uh, pressure around the world uh, to recognise a Palestinian state. We've got a decision from Sweden quite uh, recently on this. Uh, do you think that uh, the Abbott government is feeling any pressure on this front at all? Not at all. Um, Tony Abbott has proven himself to be a steadfast friend of Israel, and that's because he understands that Israel is a democracy and shares Australia's values. At the same time, Australia firmly supports a negotiated two-state solution and an independent state for the Palestinians. In fact, under the Abbott government, um, more money has been spent on aid programs to the Palestinian territories than any previous government before. But this grandstanding by Bob Carr is all about him. It's nothing else but mm. an obsession on Bob Carr's part. Speaking of grandstanding, uh, is the Prime Minister more likely to shirt front Vladimir Putin at APEC? or is he going to wait till he gets to Brisbane and do it at home? Well, as we've heard, uh, it looks like the Prime Minister and Vladimir Putin will be meeting on uh, the sidelines of uh, APEC in Beijing. Um, I think they'll have a very robust discussion and the Prime is, Minister is that what the PM won't meant, be backward. And... I mean, look, without dwelling on it, presumably that's what sure. he meant all along. When he said shirt front, he meant robust discussion. Absolutely. It's not the judo black belt versus the, uh, the, the, the boxing blue. Uh, this is uh, diplomacy and ultimately it needs to be dealt with through words uh, and actions. But, uh, you know, Russia uh, has a lot to answer for. Uh, we need their cooperation. There's a uh, unanimous UN Security Council resolution that's been passed to ensure that uh, proper investigations can take place and uh, as Julie Bishop has said in recent days more can be done by the Russians. If we just go to your portfolio responsibilities of cutting red tape there are many examples of this but I wonder for uh, today's viewers could you give us what you think are the one or two most significant decisions you've been able to get through in relation to red tape? Sure. Uh, the most significant one, I think, was announced just a couple of weeks ago by the Prime Minister as part of our Competitiveness Agenda report, Paul, where we said we will accept into Australia products, systems or services that have already been approved by trusted international jurisdictions without pro uh, requiring an extra regulatory process here in Australia. So, for example, 
uh, medical devices that are imported into Australia that have been approved by the American equivalent of the TGA or the European equivalent, um, why should they go through a very expensive process here? Why should a company that's importing commercial cooking equipment for the hospitality or the tourism or the aged care sectors uh, in Australia, why should they have to pay $12,000 for accreditation and market testing of a product that's already been approved in Europe. Um, you will see right across the board in chemicals, in plastics, in medical devices, in medicines, um, you will see big changes here uh, to, a, uh, to ensure a much quicker regulatory approval process. And that's good news for the consumer. It also means lower cost and more choice. Josh Frydenberg, you would have heard Andrew Lee uh, repelling any suggestion that Labor could even consider adjusting the GST. Will the government be prepared to keep going full bore on this debate and perhaps doing something about it at the end of the process, despite Labor's position? Oh, well, a few, well, Peter, a few points there. Firstly, GST uh, has to be on the table as part of a broad-based discussion about tax reform in this country. Uh, Wayne Swan commissioned Ken Henry to do an important report. We know it came up with 136 recommendations and they only took one of those, which was to give us the mining tax that nobody wanted. Um, but they excluded the GST from that discussion. Tony Abbott has said he won't do that, let's have a mature debate. The second point is it was Labor um, that actually commissioned modelling uh, from Treasury into an increase in the GST. They are failing to release that modelling now, uh, which only they can do, but they actually commission modelling when they were in government about increasing the GST. And the third point is what the Prime Minister has said all along, that if there was to be any increases, it would have to be, the case would have to be made by the states. They would all have to support it because ultimately they are the beneficiaries literally every of an single increase one, in GST. Literally every state would well, have to make it. You would have to get that, their support. You would also need the advocacy from key groups like the Business Council of Australia because the public aren't going You've to take got the that, politicians' though. words for it. Well, they, they've got to make a good case for it. They've got to be advocates for it. And I think the PM made that point in his speech to the BCA in Sydney uh, just a couple of weeks ago. OK, well, I guess the critical question here is, as far as you're concerned, do you think there's political movement on this front? Uh, in terms of community sentiment, in terms of uh, the views of uh, uh, community groups, business groups, premiers? I mean, is this just a futile discussion completely, or is there genuine movement which will enable the government to put something to the next election? Well, only time will tell uh, whether there is uh, actually going to be a genuine movement in this area. But I think there is a need for reform, Paul. I think that's the point. Uh, you saw Ken Henry's report point out that in Australia we have 125 taxes, but just 10 of those taxes produce 90% of the revenue. We have 115 taxes producing just 10% of the revenue. So we need broad-based tax reform in this country. Uh, we need to look at uh, what are superfluous taxes, what are disincentives to employment. For example, payroll tax. I've never thought that that is a good or efficient tax. Um, but we need a broad-based discussion. And I think the Prime Minister has said, let's put all those issues on the table. Let's get the experts to look at it. Let's do a white paper on tax reform. At the same time, do a white paper on federalism and we'll see where those two uh, reviews intersect. But we need to have this discussion and I, I think there is a strong view in the business community uh, that the tax system at the moment is too complex and it does need to be simplified and streamlined. I think that's exactly right. Josh Frydenberg, appreciate your time on Australian Agenda. Thanks very much for your company. Nice to be with you. Stay with us here on the program.